I got the flush cutters. I got the flush cutters and this still happened. Pulling it off with force and brutality using the flush cutters. It's the sprue. The sprue is too thick. Skeletons. Giant sprues. Did my... Did my flush cutters become unflush? Does that happen over time? Is this best practice? Am I flush cutting correctly? Skeletons. This one, this brew is a mess. This is going to be... Uh... Welcome home, brave heroes. I'm Ash, this is Ash Quest, and I wanted to do a follow-up on my last video about the $10 miniatures that I got from the Ukrainian web store on eBay. There were a lot of questions about these, a lot of comments on the video, just a lot of advice and tips in general that I really did appreciate. Thank you guys so, so much for all of your kind help and your kind attention. I did have a pair of flush cutters. They were out of reach, stored away at the time of recording that video, but I got them out just so I could remove these guys from their sprues proper. And one of the questions that I wanted to address was how well these scale with miniatures from, say, WizKids, Classic HeroQuest, Contemporary HeroQuest. You are looking at the Classic HeroQuest board, and while the board itself doesn't have a scale, or typically boards don't necessarily have to conform to a scale, these squares are about 15 sixteenths of an inch square. Now, when I ordered the miniatures, I did note what scale these were in, and I did know that these were going to be typically quite a bit smaller than the miniatures I'm used to. I was a bit surprised to see exactly how small that was because this was my first exposure to miniatures that are 172 scale, or 172nd. However, the convention is to say that. But I knew going in that they would be somewhat small. The idea, however, was to play around with the idea of scale and make monsters that were supposed to be large in their universe be converted to monsters that are small in the universe that uses larger scale miniatures. Case in point, I was going to use orcs as goblins and so on. What happened to my, oh, here are my orcs, yes. I got a lot of questions asking about comparing these guys to the different miniature sizes like WizKids D&D, &D, HeroQuest Classic, HeroQuest Contemporary. So I'm going to try to fulfill as many of those requests as I can in this video and also talk a little bit about how you can play with the idea of scale to mix different scales. These wargs, for example, are supposed to be 172 scale while the barbarian is from Contemporary HeroQuest. He is uh, almost too big for the square that he's on because the Contemporary Hero Quest board, the 2021 edition, is full inch squares. So we're just a 16th of an inch off here. But we're playing around with the idea and we're showing how these wargs are a perfectly suitable size for use in Hero Quest. The universe in which these wargs exist are meant to portray them as absolutely ginormous, hulking beasts relative to the size of other humanoids such as this orc. And indeed, there is a box of miniatures that 
is from this supplier that has orcs riding on wargs. But instead of the warg being the size of a horse in that universe, it is the size of a large and still very threatening dog in the 32 millimeter 2021 Hero Quest universe. Now, there's lots of arbitrary ways to measure scale and to determine scale, and some companies just kind of throw a number out there. But most commonly, the scale is based on the size of a uh, an average human male, whatever that means. So whatever the universe is positing as an average human male, they're going to build all of their models around that scale in order to give you a sense of the size of things in relative terms. So orcs obviously are, are not going to be this small in Hero Quest. Just to give you a good reference of the 2021 Hero Quest, we have a, a lineup of the goblins used in this universe, the orcs, the human barbarian and the skeletons, specifically archer orcs, archer goblins, archer skeletons. They are actually sculpts from 2024, whatever. Now they're all relatively the same size because they are based on humanoids in this universe. And they are all at a standard of 32 millimeter. By the way, there were some questions and comments in the last video that talked a little bit about the confusion between 28 millimeter and heroic scale. 28 millimeter is a scale. Heroic scale is 28 millimeter, but with things like hands, feet, and faces a bit exaggerated. It's a bit of a cartoonish style in order to allow for details to be easily spotted when you are playing a tabletop dungeon crawl or TTRPG kind of game. 28 millimeter heroic scale is a great way, a very common way to get kids interested in the visuals of a game like Hero Quest, Dark World, and so on. A lot of Games Workshop games used this scale of miniature in the 90s. Some manufacturers produce miniatures that do not conform to a particular scale. They're just all the right size relative to one another for whatever product the company is selling, like this Fairy Queen from the Fairy Bucket I did a while back. She is not in the same scale as the Barbarian, but you can very easily look at these two and say, yes, I would like a tall fairy lady to be in my campaign. Therefore, because this is how she presents herself, to the heroes and monsters of my campaign, she is now going to be in the correct scale. It is something that you can play with. Now I say that, but this dragon also came with that set, and this dragon and this fairy do not seem like they should be in the same scale. However, you could just as easily say, well, it is a small dragon, or a baby dragon, a young dragon, and you can still put these in the same game and say it's a young dragon, a wormling, a baby draconid, whatever you like. Now, if we compare that with the 28 dragon, and I'll, I'll have a video all about this beautiful monster another time, the two are wildly different. But you could very easily say if the styles matched up enough, good enough for your game, and of course, that's going to be subjective and only limited by your imagination and the imagination of your players, this dragon is just a child of this dragon. This dragon is 28, this hero is 32. This number is bigger. Why is the hero not bigger than the dragon? Because the 32 millimeter dragon would be bigger than this 28 millimeter dragon. This 28 millimeter dragon is relative to the size of a 28 barbarian or human male in this universe. So actually, this dragon is a little bit too small compared to this barbarian. He should be just a tad bit bigger or the barbarian should be just a little bit smaller. But that's if you're trying to match up your scales perfectly. Really, none of that matters. This dragon could still be used in a classic game of Hero Quest. And if you didn't care about style, you could use them in a contemporary version of Hero Quest as well. All right, enough about that. I've taken all of the monsters off of their sprues, at least one sprue per box. And I'd love to sprinkle them around this board and really decorate it. One thing I don't want to do is use any Hero Quest furniture, because while we can play with the idea of scale, the furniture in Hero Quest is scaled precisely to the miniatures that come with the game. So if we use this gigantic furniture, these miniatures are going to look way out of place. And I don't necessarily want to use the Hero Quest 2021 miniatures with the Dark Alliance minis. You can, uh, in this case, I would say that this is not an orc anymore. This is now a pygmy, or it is a kobold, or it is a, a snotling. It is something that now has a different race, a different name. It could even be an orc child. If you really wanted to, you could say that these are just orc kids running around the dungeon. I would, I would think it a bit macabre to have your heroes attacking them then, but it's your game. 
The doors are going to be massive used in this context, but I'll go ahead and use them because I kind of like the idea of having this epic scale door. The wargs aren't going to be such a big deal, but they are going to be taking up two spaces, just like a typical hero quest quadruped. So they'll be roaming the halls. When you view the board with miniatures on it that are this small, doesn't it kind of seem more like a skirmish game? It does to me, and the miniatures don't look all that threatening. But it also gives this quest, this even small section of the board that I'm building, a sense of a really grand scale, like this suddenly feels like a huge dungeon. One of the problems that I have with Hero Quest is some of the monsters are really too big for their britches, if you'll pardon the Midwestern slang here. Phrasing, these monsters are great. I love the abominations, particularly the mythic tier abomination sculpts. I love their poses. I happen to think that these are far superior to these guys. Let me know if you disagree in the comments below. And you could absolutely use these as giant old one Cthulhu type Lovecraftian monsters with the 72 scale. You could just call these 72 scale Cthulhu monsters. It would be fine. But one problem I do have with them is that if you're playing a normal game, they take up a lot of room. They encroach on the space around them. And yes, again, this isn't the typical Hero Quest board. It's about a 16th of an inch per square smaller. But these monsters still encroach on other spaces in the main game, which is a problem that a lot of you will recognize if you play these tabletop dungeon crawlers regularly. We're going to use the war trolls as well, but I do have to do a little bit of work to their bases because a lot of these guys just want to fall over. They too are going to take up two spaces, I think. Yeah, and they'll be able to attack everything around them. This particular miniature does not want to stand up straight regardless of what I'm doing to its base, so I think it's going to need the hot water trick. I don't have that available right now, so we'll skip using that one. This guy barely wants to stand, but it works. Now, what I really like is using the board like this with miniatures this small, it makes sense to have these centaurs because now it feels like there's a lot of room in the corridors and a lot of room in the rooms and they would feasibly be utilized to defend this particular crypt or dungeon or cave, castle, catacombs, whatever the setting may be. You could use these centaurs in this setting because the dungeon is just huge now. Now, in my video on these miniatures, which if you haven't seen it, I do encourage you to go check it out. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, just an unboxing video, really. An introduction to Dark Alliance in general, and they have a lot more than just fantasy miniatures, but they have so many different sets of miniatures. It is absolutely unreal, but they have a lot of real-world feudal armies, real-world contemporary armies, some mutants. They've even got a box called Rednecks. It's hilarious. But one thing that I did learn about in the last video from all the kind comments were the correct conversions between these different conventions of scale, millimeter to uh, fractional. I'm not quite sure the, the namings of these conventions. Feels like I should be, but I generally just don't use conversions between them enough to really care. Okay, we have a massive battle going on right here on the HeroQuest board. This would look way different if all of these miniatures were the hero quest miniatures that were supposed to be used with the game. It would look a lot more cluttered, but this actually looks really cool. It's uh, devoid of any furniture, which is kind of a bummer, but this does kind of make me want to go look for 172 scale furniture. So, I mean, it's kind of a plus. And all I had to do was take one sprue worth of the creatures that came from each box to make this scene. And that's that's not even every creature because there were several of them that I couldn't stand up. So that's not really several. That's not a this isn't a bad this isn't a bad amount of, of minis that I have to kind of rework to get a proper round number of everybody off the sprue. No. So what do we do with this? Do we want to convert the stats of the the proper hero quest monsters onto their counterparts. In this case, we will use the skeletons for all of the skeletons that we have unsprued and stuck on the board. We'll use the orc stats for all of the orcs that I unboxed and unsprued and put on the board. And these are war trolls. They don't really have a proper counterpart in hero quest, new or old. But if we were playing the non-US version of Hero Quest, we could absolutely use the troll stats that were offered by the Hero Quest Marvel Winter Special one of four monsters that were never in the game canonically. The Troll, the Skaven, the Grey Seer, and the Rat Ogre. We could use those stats. We could also just apply the Ogre stats, the contemporary Ogre stats. Ogre Warrior. Seems like it would be a great match for this particular creature. 
The abomination can keep the abomination stats, or it could just be a brand new boss monster full of all kinds of surprises and increased attributes. It's the only mini on the board right here that's from Hero Quest. The wargs can take on the stats of the giant wolves from the Mage of the Mirror expansion. And the centaurs, just for now, they could be the heroes, really, because they're heroic red. They're very close to being Mephiston red. Maybe just a shade off. It might even be the actual exact shade. Just send a bunch of horsemen into the dungeon. I like it. Okay, so I'm pretty sold on the scale being a good scale like this is a great standard scale i would actually be happy to put aside a lot of these miniatures probably all the ones that are here uh, i don't i absolutely don't need to unsprue every single one of these and start getting into huge army for massive war games in that territory but just to have a sprue of these 10 orcs from this line yeah absolutely and i could go on continuing to collect these monsters to add them into games for prototyping and the prototyping now doesn't need to take up a lot of space because these miniatures are such a nice small scale. But I'm sold because the details on these miniatures are more than adequate. They're actually great. I can see the limitations of the injection mold process. There is really only so much that you can do to sculpt a miniature of this size and get all of the details across before you have to say, all right, I'm, I'm just not going to make detail X and Y because it won't come across in the model. But this, this is actually really, really capable of giving you a lot of detail. I'm impressed. I am impressed. A lot of folks correctly surmised that I did not have this scale of miniature before, and I really didn't know what to expect, but I do really like them. So I'll have my collection of 28 millimeter Games Workshop heroic scale minis packed away in my Master Hero Quest box. And I'll have these 172s packed away somewhere as well for use. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I'm committing some sort of heresy here, but here's the 28mm Hero Quest Barbarian in heroic scale. As I said, exaggerated hands, feet, and face, so you can see the details. Even though they are a bit cartoonish, this is a beloved standard. But that's him compared to the skeletons of this dungeon. So when you are using the 172s, you could easily homebrew them and say that they are the skeletons of pygmies or gnomes or I don't think you'd want to say dwarves, but you could say dwarves. You could say halflings. That's kind of an obvious one that I'm missing. But you can definitely see how they're out of scale with the centaurs. Uh, one of the commenters said that they would definitely make the centaurs maybe perhaps halflings that were afflicted by chaos. And I think that's a great idea. This is a giant wolf from the Mage of the Mirror expansion in classic Hero Quest, and this is the warg. You could easily say that the giant wolf is, well, a massive, huge wolf if you're going to be using him with your 72 scale miniatures, and you can say the wargs are like the, the puppies of the wolf. They'll grow into this one day. You can use the war trolls just out of the box with any edition of Hero Quest you want. It doesn't matter. They scale very well with the 28 millimeter heroes, and they do come across as fearsome large monsters. And if you wanted to convert that to 32 millimeter, they still scale very well because, after all, they are trolls, and trolls really don't have a universally enforced standard of size or appearance. Some monsters like the Femir could easily be homebrewed in your 172 miniatures game to be just giants, just cyclopean nightmares. And then the 28mm heroic scale skeletons that come with classic hero quests, they, they don't really fit anywhere in this narrative unless you are homebrewing all of the other monsters to be like skeleton pygmies and kobolds and, and the like. Then it kind of makes sense. This is kind of why I didn't want to use the furniture for the game because it is massive. It's kind of hard to justify any sort of scale when the desk is that tall and the people who would be using this desk cannot even see above the desktop. But some pieces of furniture actually look amazing. Like this tomb is now a giant tomb. It is fit for a king. Something very wicked could have been laid to rest here. Or perhaps it is a venerated former royal leader of some kind now being defiled by these nasty little gremlins that need to be completely eradicated for their hubris. Before we go, I'm going to make good on my promise to show you what the WizKid miniatures look like compared to this stuff. I'm going to use my copy of Wrath of a Shardalon. So once again, just depending on your viewpoint and how you might want to incorporate monsters into your game, 
the sizes of the really mythical beasts like the abominations and the trolls and things that don't really have like a standard size. They could just as easily be as big as a car as they could be as big as a house. They'll scale well with pretty much anything. They're just large and they're very dangerous. However, the WizKids seem to scale very well with the Hero Quest minis, and that is probably because they're 32, 32 millimeter. So we're going to get the same result when we pair these guys up with the creatures that are 172 on the board already. But thankfully, this particular expansion, Wrath of a Shardlon, it's more of like a standalone game that could be used as an expansion. It's, it's either or. The WizKids games were pretty neat like that. Contains a lot of monsters that are of this variety that don't really need to have a particular scale. They may strictly need to have one if you're playing D&D and you need a representation of a monster that is roughly the size as it should be in Dungeons and Dragons, but I personally don't care about that. I want all of my miniatures to be the same scale if we're playing a game, but I can homebrew a monster if the monster is going to be a new homebrewed monster for my game. In other words, this makes sense to me and it's fine and perfectly acceptable, but this also makes sense to me and is fine and is perfectly acceptable. And this guy just looks even more menacing and looming over this tiny orc. Someone out there may make the comment that the WizKids miniatures aren't sculpted quite as well. I think they're sculpted well. Uh, I think it's the aesthetic that I don't like about most of the heroes and things. In fact, the Temple of Elemental Evil was the last WizKids board game that I needed to collect to complete my Dungeons & Dragons board game collection, and it's the worst out of all of it. It was the hardest to get, it was the most expensive, but it's just, to me, objectively the worst. It has the worst sculpts. It comes with, like, vegetable pygmies, which is a stupid idea, and they're, they're like, they work well with a game of 72 scale miniatures. But that's not to say that they're all bad. I, I really enjoy, like, sculpts like this one. And this lizard guy, I love him. I absolutely love him. I'd use this guy anywhere. He would scale very well with the 72 millimeter because he's just a really big boy in that context. Look at him. He's a small boy in this context. He's just a normal, a normal creature about waist high in his own universe. But in the universe that uses 172 or 172 scale, he's large, he's a threat, and he's valid. He's awesome. I kind of feel like you want to see more comparisons. Is that accurate? This is a drake of some kind. Uh, the monster names are on the cards, but I haven't played enough to memorize them, and I don't want to dig out the cards. But the drake, again, another example of a beast that can be used no matter the scale, any game. The danger level is going to be kind of indicated or implied by its size in that game relative to the miniatures you're using. But this particular monster takes up a 3x3 three three grid. He is huge. I guess if you're going to use the contemporary board, he might take up a 2x2 two two pretty easily. You could still give him the giant monster rules where he can attack every square orthogonally and diagonally adjacent to him. Or her. They. I didn't ask. But you can definitely use the furniture and the doors will seem like they work pretty well. He's, he's big, but he's slinky. He can get through that door pretty easily chase you down the hallway. He might take up two by two squares, but he can he can maneuver, he can adapt, and he can commit. Anyways, I really wanted to do a follow-up because the last one just got so much attention, and honestly, I have to thank you guys very much. It um, was the number one video that I've ever done on any channel. It was just the most successful video I have ever had in any context. So thank you guys very much for all of your attention on that. And I really hope those of you who are new here that I can continue to work hard to earn that kind attention. Well, I don't need to hope. I will work hard to maintain that kind attention, but I need something from you. I need you to let me know if I'm doing well, if I need to do something different, if I need to show you something in a little bit more detail or explain something a little bit more clear whenever I am doing presentations, explanations, and the like. And I promise to listen to all of the comments out there. Anyway, guys, just a fun little comparison, a little romp through what seems like a gigantic dungeon full of very tiny minis. Uh, we will continue to do unboxings in the future. I need to get a few more boxes of these. I am newly inspired, and I would like to do that. The problem is, which five should I get next? Well, you'll know as soon as I get them. Until next time, have an awesome rest of your day, and bye for now.